Had a question about where my fuel comes from. Well, here it is. This is oil drained out of a nasty deep fryer off a food truck. And I'll just let it, I got it in these containers to settle. Once it settles for a day or two, I'll put it into the bigger container to centrifuge it, heat it. Over here is my truck. 1990 Ford F-250 with the International 7.3 engine. Let's take a look at some different types of clamps. Now everyone's familiar with your typical strap type, band type clamp. It has little notches in it with a screw. The screw grabs maybe a quarter of the threads. As you tighten it, this thing squeezes together. These clamps have a major problem. If you tighten them too much, they'll jump these little slots and strip. They'll either strip the bolt or they'll chew up these little straps, making them useless. This is an improved design. This one here has its own little nut with the thread that goes inside. The wires that hold the hose also keep this little nut with little tabs on a captive. This is much more difficult to strip and in most cases if you over tighten it you'll simply break the bolt. You can then, if you can find one, replace the bolt and use a clamp. Another type of clamp is what's known as keystone clamps. Now, this is not keystone cops. You're not going to see a bunch of 1920s cars with actors and silly hats running around with the film sped up. These are actually just a loop of steel. It's joined together at one side. In this case, it just kind of fits over one part to the other. It has this end piece sticking out. And then you simply grab it with pliers and squeeze it together, which tightens the clamp. These keystone clamps are very handy. They're not technically reusable, although I did reuse these because I didn't have any. It's getting harder and harder to find supplies in this town. They've replaced most of the warehouses where the supply houses used to be with either a CrossFit gym or an apartment building. That seems to be the only thing they build nowadays. And again, compare it to your typical clamp with the slots in it and the screw. So it's different. Another type of clamp you might find is the spring clamp. And here's one right here on this injector line. This is simply squeezed together with pliers or your fingers if you can stand it. You slip on the hose and when you let go of this clamp, spring tension holds it on. These are only good for some suction lines or some low pressure lines. In this case, it's the fuel injector return that comes from the diesel injection system. There are also fittings that use no clamp at all. For example, this black nylon line goes to this brass fitting. It's simply heated up or pressed over with pressure and once it's on there, it won't come out easy. So that one has no clamps. And by the way, besides clamping, you could also have crimp fittings. Over here, we have an example of copper lines. These are the fuel lines that I use for the vegetable oil. There's a nut and there's a little, what they call a compression ring inside. So when you slip the line on, you put the ring on it and you tighten this down, it squeezes a compression ring, which then seals the line. On air conditioning or higher pressure lines, you have what's known as a ferrule. This ferrule is actually just like a piece of pipe that's sort of bent over on one end. And what you do, you slip it over the line and you either braise it to the line itself or you simply smash the whole thing down into a groove so it can't get away. A special tool known as a crimper or swaging tool squeezes this together. There's actually a better example of it over here on this suction line on the air conditioning system. This one is an aluminum piece and you can see that the line itself has a bead that's pressed into it. And when this is put over it and squeezed together, it locks in the bead. And this is squeezed over the hose, sealing it up to the tubing. Here's another one on the high pressure line. And there's more of them over here on the service ports. Here we have the battery clamps. These are brass battery clamps. This is the original 
battery cable. Now you can actually buy a new set of battery cables for this truck. Back when I looked at it, it was almost $200. And considering I didn't even spend $1,000 for the truck, there's no way I'm gonna spend $200 for battery cables. So I took off the original lead ones and I put on these with a little clamp on, crimp on side. And what I did, I cleaned the end of the wire, filled it with solder, got a copper pipe, and then squeezed it using the hydraulic hose crimper. Then squeezed this together, heated it up, and added solder. And every one of these battery terminals is soldered to the wire. And I mean every one. You can see right here. This one, you can get a better idea. Some of the wires, yeah, they're a little bit on the outside, but there's plenty of solder in here that holds it in place. This one over here also has the copper tubing. It's well attached. Also notice these brass terminals, they don't come loose easy. So you're not gonna have this thing just pop out like if it was a screw type terminal. And that's really about it. So, gives you an idea of some of the common things you would use under the hood.